Hi, Northwest Market Center. I'm going to teach you guys today how to get paid inside of Command. We're going to be covering Command, Compliance, how to submit documents, and also how to submit your transaction to get the DA. This is what you can expect to cover during this, um, this training. This PowerPoint is also going to be available inside of the description of this video. The path to get paid is very simple. We're going to learn how to enter a contact into command. We're going to learn how to put it into an opportunity. We're then going to submit an offer. And then once we have all the necessary contracts, we're going to put them into command, into the opportunity, either through DocuSign or through zip forms or separately. We're going to submit these documents to the market center and then correct them. And then we're going to submit a submission request, a commission request um, from the uh, from command. So for the first step, it's compliance. The first thing is that there's a specific section in command that talks all about this. We're gonna you're gonna submit your documents to review by the market center. We're going to review them and approve or reject them. And you're going to correct them as we, you know, review your corrections and approve or reject based on whether they meet our compliance criteria. So in document management, we have a few different options here. We have zip forms, which integrates with DocuSign. DocuSign also integrates with command directly. We have dot loop, which is a paid feature inside of command. Um, but you don't have to use dot loop and we have manual upload So technically if you wanted to you could just use paper forms scan them in your computer and then manually upload them The documents have the opportunity will house all these documents and you can just upload them directly into there either through, straight from your computer or from any of those systems previously mentioned There's also custom folders if you have any specific documents you want to keep track of and if you want to keep track of anything else related to that um, rela related to that opportunity, just kind of keep track of it. For example, so this person put pictures of their listing, um, you can put them in there as well. And commissions. This is coming soon, but we are actually completely ready to go ahead and uh, go with this. You can start uh, submitting commission requests to us as a market center, and we will be able to approve them on our end and get you paid. So the process still remains the same as to where it was um, when it was in labs and it wasn't ready. So we're going to go ahead and create an offer in the Offers tab. You can, uh, we're going to go ahead and review it uh, based on your client's feedback, review and negotiate and compare offers. This is what you're going to do. And then we're going to basically accept the offer for you. Uh, you or you're going to accept the offer and then the commission tab will be available. So essentially you create the offer and then accept the offer. And once you do that, the commission tab will be available for you to actually um then um well this is well, then, you, then this commission tab will show up sorry once the commission tab shows up you'll actually be able to submit to us this commission tab as a market center you'll be able to see the sales price the commission the amount of units you'll be able to add notes concessions uh deductions and all of that all those details and you'll be able to submit to us as a market center these are the difference between when an offer is accepted versus rejected. Um, now, you, this is an additional feature of this system. You can you have the ability to actually create multiple offers inside of that uh, offer tracking, uh, you know, um, system, and you can send those if, uh, to your um, client uh, to show them w what's been going, what's been coming through, and you can actually do a comparison, an offer comparison. Um, we're not going to be covering that today. We're just going to be covering the basics about how to get paid inside of commands, which means that you do have to create an offer and accept it, but you don't have to create all every single offer you receive. Just the one that gets accepted and is actually the one that you're going to follow through on um, in the transaction. There's a lot more information inside of command and inside of KW Connect, so feel free to reach out uh, or check out those specific sections inside of um, this is the help icon, for example, instead of command. Uh, Connect Live is a great place to check out some more content, and there's a lot more information here. 
Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch on over to command. And we're going to go ahead and get started. The first step you're going to want to do to get started, to get ready for to do all of this, is to connect DocuSign. And I'm going to go ahead and recommend connecting Texas Realtors. I'm going to recommend connecting Zip Forms through Texas Realtors as well. We're going to go ahead and start off with DocuSign and set a command first. So to do that, I'm going to click on my name at the top right, go down to settings right here. And I'm going to scroll down. And right over here where I see digital signature and transactions and I see DocuSign, I'm going to click connect account. I'll have an option here to enter an email. Now, if this isn't an accurate email for you, you can go ahead and edit that to be whatever email works best for you. For example, that one works better for me. And you can click send registration email. For me, I'm going to go ahead and click on login because I already have created a DocuSign account. It'll ask me to log in and it will connect my account. For you, what you'll receive when you actually send registration email is you'll see, receive this button, which says, this email, which says, you've been invited to join DocuSign Rooms, and it'll include the accept invite button. This will take you to another screen where you will create your DocuSign account, and you'll be able to join DocuSign Rooms. It will take you to this page once you've finished creating that account. This is DocuSign Rooms, and this is basically where you're going to be working to um, get things signed and then put them inside of command. So um, now that we have this set up, at least to where it's created the account, you're going to want to go back to command. You will see this authorize button here instead of connected and disconnect account. You'll see an authorize button. That's the last step you'll have to take to complete this and have it connected. It'll ask you to sign into that newly created account and then you'll be good to go. It might also ask you to accept any agreements between KW and DocuSign, but if you just accept and kind of follow those processes, it's very straightforward and easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my name at the top right to get started, my initials over here. I'll be able to see more information here, contacts, preferences. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is click on preferences this is another step you have to take. So in order to get forms to show up here, I'm going to scroll down here next to profile and go to integrations. We're going to be connecting zip form here. I'm going to go ahead and unlink this account right now so I can show you the process of linking it. And I'm going to clear this information as well. So this information right here is your NRDS ID information. We're going to want to find your NRDS ID by clicking on the link that says find your NRDS ID. That'll take you to this page. It says enter last name and email, which is recommended. Now, if you, um, if you don't know which email you use to set up your Trek account, and if you haven't kept that up to date, then this might not be the best option for you. The real estate license number is usually the best option. Just remember to add a zero in front of your um, license number and don't add any dashes. I'm going to go ahead and do my last name and email because I do know that it's accurate and up to date. I'm going to submit and now I have my NRGS ID. I can go ahead and copy that, put it into here. Now, some people will have issues trying to connect ABOR with this, I have noticed. So, um, usually Texas Association of Realtors works as long as, um, you're a member of Texas Realtors, which you, I mean, most of you guys should be. <laughs> but um, if you don't know, if you notice that one of, whatever board you're trying to use doesn't work, try to use Texas Association of Realtors. That should work for you. I'm going to go ahead and use Austin Board of Realtors and save changes. And now that my, I'm validated for those two association memberships, I will be able to add uh, forms into my documents and, and add into my transactions. So I'm fully ready to go inside of DocuSign now. Um, the next step is to kind of go through the process inside of command. Before I do that, though, I do want to finish um, adding zip forms to this as well to make sure that we can actually create templates in here and do other things inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to texasrealestate.com. I'm going like, to open a new tab inside of your browser and go to texasrealestate.com. 
and I'm going to click on login at the top right. Now, if you don't have an account, you don't have a member login, simply click create account. You can use your Trek number and you can generate a password for yourself here and then create your account just like that. Very straightforward. Once you've done that, you can log in and that will allow you to access zip forms. This is not something you have to pay for. As a Texas realtor, you get zip forms. So I'm going to go ahead and click on zip forms. What you will see once you click on zip forms is an additional setup page. It is very straightforward. All you do is click OK. You might have to retype in texasrealestate.com at the top and then and then go back into zip forms once again. If that is the case, just follow the process. It is very straightforward. You just have to click OK a few times. So um, this is zip forms. This is very straightforward inside of here. Um, there's templates, transactions. So when you're inside of DocuSign Rooms, you'll be able to add, um, create transactions that link between zip forms and DocuSign. I will show you all of that in a second. Um, the main thing we have to do here is get our username and password. So I'm going to click on the little profile icon here and then go to profile and settings. I'm going to go to sign in and security. And right here on your username, you will probably see a longer number that's really annoying to mess with. And you can either try to remember that and type it in. You can either copy that or you can edit this to be a nicer username. What I do is I, I change mine to nicer username and I, and I copied it and I saved it here before moving on. Once I have this saved and I agree with what it says in there, I think it's good. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Well, then I'm going to click on sign back in and it's going to take me to a login page. Now you're not going to know your password because you just created your account and they didn't ask you to create your password. So you're going to click on forgot password right here. All you have to do there is enter your own pass, your own username, and then click on next, and it will send you one uh, password reset via email. Or if you add your mobile number to that account page previously, you can get a text message. Now it's grayed out for me because I haven't entered that information. It says no validated mobile number exists in this account, so you have to create a validated mobile number first. But email works just fine. Once you click on that, it'll send you an email, and it works just fine. Once you've created, reset your password and logged back in and you verified that it works, then you're totally ready to go. You know your password. You can go ahead and enter that information into here. I'm going to go ahead and use my password manager to copy that information in. And now I have linked ZipForm account and I can pull ZipForm documents and transactions into, into DocuSign. Very straightforward process. So far, that's taken us a few minutes. And we are ready to go inside of ZipForms and DocuSign completely. If you wanted to use both of these systems together to be able to create templates that have your own information in them and to be able to work inside of command. So now that we're ready to go, we have all that connected. I'm going to go ahead and get started in command. I'm going to go to the home page right here. You can click on the big red KW to see what all these different doc, uh, these different applications are. The main ones we're going to be working in today are contacts and opportunities. I'm going to go ahead and click on contacts. And uh, you can see I already put all of my contacts in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add contact at the top right and add a name and an email. These are the only two things that are required for you to be able to send documents to your clients. So those that's the very bare minimum. So you type in whatever name you want, client name, and then client email, client at email.com. You get the idea and you create it. There's also a lot more functionality in here again, but I'm not going to be covering it. This is just a how to get paid video. Now, once you have that client, you can go ahead and search for that client. I'm going to say, for example, it's AJ Guzman. I found him right here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and click on him. And you'll see this page show us shows up. And all I did is I clicked on his name. I didn't click on this little tick box, I clicked on his name. This shows up. On the left side, you'll see all of his information, any social profiles he has linked, any other information I've added for him. And on the right, you'll see a section called timeline, any activities I've done with him. Um, and if I click to the one over, one over from the timeline, I can see his opportunities. Uh, I have a lot of opportunities for this guy because uh, this is my test guy. I have set up for everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one to have now seven. I'm gonna click on create opportunity. Oh, that's, that gives me a good point, by the way. While you're doing this, you're probably going to be setting up some test ones to start off with. As soon as you uh, understand the system and get better with this, please go back and delete all of your test opportunities. This becomes really problematic when, um, when compliance and commissions, when your MCA and uh, you know Alice and Jason, the accounting, all of these people are trying to look for real opportunities and they have to sort through some fake ones. It becomes problematic when that has to, when that happens. So please, when you get a chance, um, clear these out. I'll show you how to clear these out in a second. I'm gonna go to create opportunity here first, though. And you select the opportunity type here in the drop down, listing buyer, landlord, tenant. Make sure all the co-sellers, co-buyers are entered into con command as well, uh, so that you can select them here by searching in your contacts. For example, you can search all of my contacts and I can find anything I need there. Again, client there. The client's already entered for you because you're in their contact record, so you're totally good to go. Now, you only have to enter in the sections with asterisks. So the market center, now if you have a team and for some reason they're not there but you need them to be there because everything goes under them, then you select your team. Otherwise, if they have allowed you to have your own opportunities outside of the team, then you can go ahead and do that. It completely depends on what your agreement is with them. You'll notice that when I select that team, the owner changes to the team lead. However, when I erase that, I become the owner. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and add the commission rate. This commission rate is whatever you receive in the transaction. So for example, this is a listing. Say for example, uh, my client wants to pay 5% instead of 6% and I can't negotiate them out of it for some reason, for whatever reason. And maybe I should go to power hour more often. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and accept 2% so that um, the buyer agent gets 3%. It's more attractive to buyers and we can get this kind of moving, this transaction going. Uh, a lot of buyer's agents might not show houses that are at 2%, maybe in this, um, situation with COVID-19 right now, they might be doing that, you know, just to kind of get it by. But anyways, you you what you receive, what you put here inside of commission rate is what you receive as the agent. So, because that's what we're going to receive as the brokerage, as the market center. So just keep that in mind. Um, don't put 6% here if it's a listing. Put whatever you receive as the agent. So I'm going to go ahead and put 3% because that's pretty standard. And inside of here, these are different sections the different phases that you'll have. So for example, an appointment, I'm either scheduling an appointment, I'm either, I've either kept that appointment. You can have custom um, versions of these. These will always stay constant and either be cultivate appointment or active. Um, a lot of people, they'll do this once they've already um, signed agreements or whatever. So you can go ahead and put active and you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and create opportunity. And that takes me into this section here. I can either continue to work in here or I can X out of here I can see it right here instead of opportunities now. It's the May 5th one right here, Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo, guys, by the way. And once I clicked on that link here, Guzman Listing, it took me into another tab into this section. Two very important things here. If you need to know the status of your DA, the best way to share that information with your MCA is to email accounting at kwaustinnw.com and to copy this opportunity ID and send that to them. That is what they'll be able to search in their system and set a command and find this opportunity for you and tell you what the status is, what you need to change, any of that information, what they're waiting on, that kind of deal. Then you'll be able to get the information about what they're looking for uh, way faster. Another way is if you wanna be able to just tell them, hey, here's the property address, you have to have it entered into this property section here. 
The good thing is KW has made it very easy and created this search. So I can actually search for the location. Say for example, 14705 Olive Hill Drive. Don't send me any mail, guys. This is the address and it pulls in everything else. I just clicked on the actual first thing that shows up that meets my criteria and everything else shows up and enters it in. That's required. I go ahead and hit save. That's done. So it's there's no excuse to not having the property ID or not being able to actually reach out to your MCA with the right way. So um, moving on, that is uh, essential information to add before you kind of get started with anything else in here. So um, a few things in here. You notice the tabs I was talking about earlier, the documents tab right here, the offers tab right here, and the commissions tab. You'll notice that it's grayed out, but there's also this little informational box here that says you'll be able to view your commission when you've accepted offer. So you'll have to go to offers and create an offer and accept one. So we're gonna do all of that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and go into documents here to get started with starting with documents. One thing I've noticed a few times, and you'll notice it gives you a little uh, message here. To start work with an opportunity, please select the checklist type first. So if I go over here to the checklist type here, um, there's all these different types. There's condo, farm and ranch, referrals, all these other ones. Um, for most people, we're gonna choose residential. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on residential. And now everything's showing up. There's the listed section, the under contract section, these change for each one of these, and the closed section. The closed section is really our section as the market center. We're going to put the closing disbursement, is DA inside of here. So once you see the closing section has been approved, you'll know that you have a DA and you're good to go. Um, and under contract, um, this is where you put the de details of the contract and the offer and everything else inside of here, seller's disclosures, um, all those other stuff. Um, you'll notice at the very top is the manual green sheet. This is optional. Um, right now, we're switching from the manual green sheet to commissions. The commissions tab is now required. So we, we're suggesting that you can do the green sheet if that's what you're more familiar with, you know, just to kind of um, kind of keep, keep sane right now. <laughs> and then um, do the, uh, this next process, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So um, each of these has to be approved in order for you to move along. So the listed section and the under contract section. I will show you a little bit more about the buyer side in a second because that section, the first section actually isn't required. Um, and it's, it's called consultation. But um, in listings, you'll, you will actually have to um, add more information here. So um, under the listed section, you to add uh, files here, it's very simple. Say for example, I have the information about brokerage services that was signed by the clients. I can add a file here and I drag and drop or I browse my files here to look for uh, information. I can go to my documents, for example, and find anything I need inside of there. Drag and drop the files into here and then assign. Uh, you can also browse your custom folders in here uh, and assign from there. Now, you notice that you haven't seen anything about zip forms or DocuSign. You're not gonna see anything about um, zip forms inside of command. However, you will see things about a DocuSign when you click on start a transaction over here you'll see this option shows up, DocuSign or dot loop. Now, if you don't have dot loop linked, it will most likely just send you straight to DocuSign. However, if you do have dot loop linked, then you'll get this drop down. I'm gonna go ahead and select DocuSign. And what that will do is I'll populate another tab, which takes me straight into where I need to go for DocuSign. And I'll have the opportunity to add documents into this room. I'll also, if I go back into command, I'll also notice that there is sync transaction, go to transaction here. So I'll have the ability to sync information from this transaction into rooms, into DocuSign. And I'll have the opportunity to go straight to that room over here. All this will do if I close this, for example, say you accidentally close that and you need to get back to it and you don't know the keyboard shortcut control or command if you're on Mac, shift T. If you do that, that will reopen any tab, by the way. If you don't know that, then what you do <laughs> now, um, then you can click on go to transaction and that will take you back into that DocuSign room again. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add here. DocuSign forms is right here. I can go ahead and click on that. Since we added our NRDS ID, we have the ability to add forms here. I can choose the forms group and I'll be able to see all the different types of uh, transactions. For example, uh, residential sales transaction one and four, that's a buy side. Residential listing transaction, that's a sale. 
And then there's listing transaction for a lease, lease applicant, so tenant, uh, farm and ranch, condo, commercial. And then there's also all TXR docs if I wanted to browse all the documents that has that are in TXR. So for example, I can find information about brokerage services. Like I said earlier, I can add that. You can add more than one at a time, by the way. I just chose one. So for example, if I go back into there, and I choose, I can just keep it on library if I'm just going to search for all of either ABOR forms or TXR forms. And then I can look for the next thing. Maybe I need the one, two, four family residential contract. You can, again, you can highlight more than one thing. You can select all if you wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to select one to four residential contract and continue. One thing I highly recommend people to do when they're using DocuSign is to go to Actions, add a folder, and call it maybe Extra Docs or something like that, and create it. The main reason I recommend this is so that um, you can move the extra documents. You will get extra documents once you sign these, because what will happen is you'll get a document that's signed whenever you sign these documents, and you'll get the certification that it's been signed by DocuSign. This is for, um, for you to remain super compliant and for it to be really easy to use, um, you know, once you actually need to go back and maybe make a minor edit, you'll have the original that hasn't been signed. Um, so you can go back and make a quick edit and then resend for signatures using the originals. So all you have to do there is delete the signed documents and then go back, grab the, go to extra docs, grab your document again. So for example, say I sign this one, I go to DocuSign. It takes me into here. I can go ahead and add recipient. And I choose pre-tagged roles. I choose buyer one. Or actually, no, I'm a seller listing agent, so I'm going to go ahead and do seller one. And my client's added into here because command will connect all that information over. So all I have to do is select them, add selected. And if I have to sign this as well, I can add myself as well. I can do that at the same time, by the way. I could have done listing agent and um, seller one if I wanted to, all at the same time. And I select myself here and add selected. And I say needs to sign. Now you can also change the order here. I'm gonna go ahead and select AJ to be the second one to receive it. And now I'm the first one, he's the second one. So he'll have, he'll receive something that's already been signed by me essentially. I'm gonna go ahead and go to next. Now, because I haven't added any of the other details into um, the transaction, you notice that it puts the name and um, anything else inside of here. If I put the buyer information inside of the details tab inside of um, DocuSign or inside of command, it would have shown up inside of here. So just keep that in mind. You should be putting information into the details tab before you do this. Um, and also, if you click on the actual um, contract itself, you can fill this out beforehand as well. You'll notice though that the initials and everything else that needs to be filled out by um, uh, my client is in blue because his name is blue here and mine's going to be yellow. So once I get down to where I need to sign something, I will see a yellow signature. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Listing broker, date signed, all that information. Now. I'm going to go ahead and do the recipient preview to see what this looks like for myself and for um, my client. So when you view this yourself to sign it, all you're going to do is go down to where you need to sign it, click on sign. There is a signature. It's been added and you'll be able to finish. You can't finish right now because it's just a preview, but go to my client. I'll be able to see what they see. They can click on start here. They sign there, sign there, sign there. It just goes long like that. Next, next, next. And then they sign and they're done, finish. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to go back because this is an actual employee of KW. I don't want him to receive a random document. I'm gonna change his email to be my work email. You don't have to do that step. You can keep all that information the same. I'm going to go ahead and hit next, and then I'm going to hit send.
once you hit send, this envelope, which is what this is, by the way, it will show up inside of envelopes inside of DocuSign. So now it says it needs my signature inside of envelopes. I can go straight into here and sign right away. It says needs to sign. So I need to sign it before he even receives it. So I'm going to go ahead and sign. I'm going to allow them to know my location. It's going to ask you a few different information. Now for me, um, it, it's actually going to let you just sign immediately. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. When you click on finish, I believe it will just sign it for you. Otherwise, it will tell you that you do need to sign. So great. So I've successfully signed the envelope. Now it's just waiting for the other people. So I'll receive that inside of my email a little bit. Um, however, we're gonna what we're gonna do. You can see I just received it in my email. It's got a notification. So I'm gonna show you the details tab. This is the details tab. This is what I was talking about earlier. So if you edit this. And you'll notice this is the seller information. All the seller information, all of your your client's information has been added. Now there's no way for um, this, these systems to know automatically what um, the person that you're working with is gonna, uh, what their information is. You know, the buyer, the buyer's agent, all of that information. So you're gonna want to go ahead and fill all that out here. All the roles are the right side. So the buyer one, if you scroll down, the buyer's agent, all of that's there. On the left side is all of the, um, the actual transactions, like for example, um, the the address of the actual place, the listing date, all of the other information here. Now you don't have to fill it out here, it just will uh, make it easier because when you go over here and you click on one to four, it'll have more information filled out for you. Otherwise you can just click on each document you want and have it pre-filled. Now, if you have information and you can just fill it manually yourself as well, right in here and then hit save and close. Now, if you don't like that workflow, you don't like how that works, there's a lot easier workflows inside of zip forms to connect zip forms to this transaction and get that working. I'm gonna click on zip forms right here, click on create. And then I can say that room name, I can say that this is this room. So it's Guzman uh, dash. Listing, it's a listing, select property type is residential, create. I can select zip form location and I can choose um, link transaction. And there are no documents in this transaction. So these are all, this is the link transaction essentially. Now you'll notice that there's no documents in that transaction because you we haven't added anything inside of zip forms. So now if I refresh zip forms here, I'll see two transactions instead of transactions. One of which is um, this one, the Guzman listing one. So Guzman listing is now active. I can go into there. And if you have templates set up, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how to use this effectively. Um, I'm gonna do that later on in a different class. But if you click on templates here, you can create templates like pre-contract forms so that you have things ready to go um, before you even receive an offer. If you're on the listing side, you can do pre-contract buyer forms, pre-contract seller forms, and do all of the different workflows you have inside of here. And then all you do is once you have the documents inside of here, say for example, I add a document here and I choose add form. I search for general, Uh, let's see if it shows up. General information or general notice about seller's disclosure notice. I guess I can do that. That works. I can add that. And if I, you know, go ahead and, you know, add all the information I need inside of here, I can do a bunch of information inside of here. I can go now here to add, go to zip form. I choose the link transaction and now it'll show up. I can select that one and add it very easily. And it shows up here as a zip form document. Very straightforward. Um, so that is that.
Um, now if I go into command, to get this all set up inside of command, I'm going to go to uh, attach multiple files, so I can add a bunch of documents all at once. Now of course, you can do the same thing, you can go browse your files, um, use them, use your computer to grab them. So if you want to, you can scan them into your computer, and then pull them into here. Or you can go to DocuSign, this new tab shows up, DocuSign at the top. And for example, information about broker services, I can go ahead and select that one. And you'll notice there's a bunch of documents that show up. Now, um, you'll notice there's just one folder showing up here. That other folder isn't showing up, and it's because it's empty. So say, for example, we didn't need that zip form folder, is that, I mean document, I can go ahead and put that over there. And now if I refresh this section here, I go to information about broker services, that shows up in extra docs, and it's at the bottom. So that's why it's really important to create that distinction because anything you don't need, you can put in that folder and it'll shove it down to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add information about broker services and I believe the one to four contracts. So I'm actually going to do that in the next section because that's in the other contract section. I attach this, that allows me to submit to Market Center right here and I can do that and then it'll show a different status here. Instead of open, it will say submitted. When I go to under contract here, I can go to contract, add a file, go to DocuSign, and then once it loads, I can go ahead and choose one to four residential contract to sign. Now I can submit this one to Market Center too, so these will both be submitted. That is how you get everything from both of these uh, checklists to be submitted to us and waiting for a review. You will receive a notification at the top left and also in Kelly. So if you have Kelly and you add notifications, that will um, allow you to get notifications as to when these are reviewed and accepted or rejected. You'll receive comments right here next to the status based on whether it's been rejected or not. Uh, if it's been rejected, it'll tell you why in that comment section. And then you'll be able to check here. If this is approved too, you'll see the DA. Now, you will likely won't see that after just doing the compliance section. You will have to do the next section, which is going to the offer section. So we're gonna go ahead and go into offers and I'm gonna add a new offer. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it this one final offer instead of initial offer because we're just doing this just to get paid. We're not doing this to use all of the other great features inside of command. We're doing this just to get paid. So this is really important. The close date here, make sure this is super accurate. Make sure this is um, the legitimate close date of your transaction. So say it closes in um, a week or you know even two weeks from now, that's the ideal. Let's say it closes from a week from now. It's actually a little under a week. So now let's, let's say it closes for a week from now. We go ahead and do that. We, and we're done, to, we're ready to go. We have the name and the everything else in there. You have to add the buyer. So for example, we can add them in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add some random information inside of here. And the associate's name, so the representation. I'm gonna go ahead and add, you know, agent name. And there, go to terms. You can add the actual amount of everything. So for example, say they're doing um, uh, 2,000 or let's say 20,000 down on a 400,000 not 40, $400,000 house. Um, the rest isn't really required. You know, percentage, earnest amount, you can add these informations into here. I'm gonna go ahead and do agent analysis, pros, cons, summary. You don't have to do that, you can hit save, and I'm good to go. So now all I have to really have is the offer, really the amount, so I get the commission amount. The main, the important part is the commission amount, so that way we know how much you're going to basically get paid on this. You might want to add the earnest amount of option fee, you know, for your own kind of sanity. You can add as much information as you want. I'm just trying to get this accepted and through. I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept, and now you'll notice commissions shows up. And just like that, it says contract dates required. I'm gonna go ahead and add contract date. Uh, that's the date that I believe that is the um, execution date, but uh, you can ask the, um, I believe that's correct. That's, that should be the execution date. I'm going to go ahead and say that that is today. Now that that's all accurate, I can see what all this information is. Now I have the ability to submit immediately. Now, the reason why I have the ability to submit immediately is because you'll have a sales price, the commission rate, 
and the commission itself here and the total commission of the agent breakdown of what you know your agent yourself all of this stuff it all amounts to that total commission here so the de the deductions and everything else you know um you can take them all out in the, on this side here you can add an item here that is a bonus concession deduction out inside outside referral all of that stuff however if you also have um, another agent you notice at the bottom it says can't add another agent total payment amount has been distributed all of this checks up because all of this commission is going straight to you essentially based on this you know also your cap and everything else you're going to be able to see how much you're paying to the office here how much you're paying to the actual agents themselves um so you're going to see how much of that you actually get but um you can tell that all of this is going straight to this agent right here now you can add units and then that will change uh things as well the other way to change things is to say for example you're receiving less on this you can do say you're doing this a half deal with another agent for example you can do half of 12,600 which will be 6,300 I believe and it kind of stopped me in the middle because it noticed that I changed this And I can change this to 300. It's going to pro probably try to do that again. Yep. Now it's saying total agent commissions do not equal the total commission for the opportunity. Now at the very bottom, I have the ability to add another agent. I can select that agent in the market center, for example. You can choose Adam Sadovsky and then add. I'm pretty sure it will allow you to do any agent in KW. Um, and then I'll be able to. Otherwise, you can do add item and do outside referral. And inside of here. I can put their commission and I can say they have 6,300 as well. I'll be able to see if my math is correct here, if everything adds up. And it does add up, it's all perfect. They'll be able to see this information. You can see this as well. And um, you're basically ready to go. You can go ahead and submit and you're done. You just gotta wait until you get um, you know, a notification that's been approved as well. And you'll be able to see that it's been approved here. And you should see a DA inside of the closed section here. This will be approved. And you'll see the DA right here. That is how you get paid inside a command. Very simple. <laughs> Lots of steps, but very simple. Each individual step is simple, but there's a lot of steps. That's why I included in this video. And I'm also including that um, PowerPoint in the description. We're going to have more PDF guides available to you guys very soon. Uh, be sure to check out our Facebook page. It is the Northwest Market Center. It is the KW Northwest Family page. That is the page. You can also check out the NWMC Command page. I'm posting on there regularly new content. And uh, if you check out the Files tab in there, I'm posting all my PDF guides in there as well. So please check all of that out. Um, subscribe to this YouTube channel and go down to the description. And... Um, you see all the links I've put in there for you. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that, that's this. Uh, that's how to get paid, guys. Um, have a great day. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Um, if you're watching this later on, it might not be 100% relevant to you. We're kind of in a pandemic right now. But um, take care. Have a good one, guys.